Hello, everybody. Look at you doing the nose, the eyes, the eyebrows, the hair, and the. Okay. What else you want to say? I'm so sad. Hmm. The dinosaur on the bus. The dinosaur on the bus goes beep beep beep. Beep, 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 the rose on the bus go beep, 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 all through the town. That was my son trying to teach you how to draw caricatures. Hope you liked it. Um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm doing my normal thumb sketching stuff, thumbnail stuff. Um, but I wanted to do all that... Um, you know, frustrating part as far as going through five or six different thumbnails. I wanted to find a way to do that in my mind. And what I did is I, I had the video going. Uh, it's like a YouTube video of uh, this guy getting interviewed. And then I had like three other pictures. The side view picture, which was hard to find. And then I had the reference picture, the main reference one that I was going with. It's with him in a tux and a bow tie. And then I had like a quarter view one of some something else. I forgot what that was. But um, anyway, so I, I had that going. And what I was going to do is what I did, uh, which you don't see, is 30 minutes before I started sketching, as, as I not only was I studying the person, but I was thinking out the caricature in my mind. You see, usually I, I just look at the video and study the person. And once I get a quick, I guess, vision of the guy in a caricature form I start I start right with the pencil and I start sketching and then I it just kinda evolves for on the page um, but I basically did all that in my mind so I was thinking about um, thinking through all the features so I was thinking about the nose and I looked at it and I thought about how how you know how how I could draw it in all the different ways and then I thought about the mouth and how I could draw that and thought about the different ways I could draw that uh, one of the first things I thought about was the overall shape you know which 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 part of the face that I want to shrink uh, you know which one did I want to exaggerate or, or enlarge so I did basically all that in my mind it took about 30 minutes so I wasn't just studying the feature the guy I was actually thinking about uh, you know the caricature the caricature uh, caricaturing the features and I was thinking about how I was going to stylize them and make them simple and and exaggerate um, each one of the features. I even did the ears and I the temptation was to stop and to like pick up a pencil. I really wanted to pick it up real quick and start drawing but I I wanted to go through each and every, each individual feature first and then um, start the sketching so so that's what you didn't get to see. I was basically doing that in my mind, and then I hit record, and I started to uh, sketch. And the benefit was, I think, um, my first thumbnail was the one I, I kept. Um, you know, I'm still, I, I was still thinking through features, and uh, again, as you see me sketching, I was still thinking about how I was going to draw th things like, you know, the hair and the mustache and the, the cheek. Um, but doing that thinking in the very beginning really helped out. Uh, so it's kind of, I mean, it does the same thing as, as if I was kind of warming up before and stuff. Um, so, but I think I'd like, I'd like doing that. So I think I'll be doing that in the future. I don't, I don't think I've ever done that, but I'll, you know, thinking it all, all the way through and stuff. But um, I think I'll be doing that in the future. Um, I actually do two more sketches next to this one. And, um, and um, I, I don't use them. I just use the first one. Um, I do watercolor. I did watercolor. Um, I had someone ask last week what you know what or a few days ago or maybe yeah I think it was a few days ago asking how to you know uh, I want to get water I want to do watercoloring what which ones do I buy and if you're first starting off like doing watercoloring I, you know I started off like a year ago I think or eight months ago I I use the the real cheap ones that they give you in like elementary school I think you could even find them at like find them at the Dollar General or even like at a gas station or something the real cheap ones the ones that have like eight colors and it's on a small tray um, but I, I use those and I, I practiced on those um, but I would recommend you get those but just don't use the brush the brush that comes with that 
usually it's real cheap and it's it's like plastic or something but uh, the bristles are plastic and they're not very well they're not very good not not, not well made but uh, use a good brush and then use those cheap ones and then move on to like the real expensive uh, watercolors and there's different ones there there's even like watercolor in a tube and some people who I think I've talked to at the art store, they, they buy the tube ones and then they squirt them out like on a tray and then they let them dry. And then when they come back, like they want to use them a few days later or whatever, all they have to do is get water and um, rub up against it and it, and it it becomes fresh again for you to paint on. Uh, so they let, they, you know, they, they let them dry once they squeeze them out of the tube. And I, I think I think there are some, of course, that use it, you know, right out of the tube. Um, but anyways, I, I use the ones that are already dried. And it's the Windsor Newton. It's like in those small little, you know, squares or whatever. Um, but anyways, um, let me see here. What I'm doing now is um, I'm just sketching out the... Oh, I'm going back to my first thumbnail. And I'm sketching it out. And I'm still sketching out the different things. Uh, I think I worked on it a little bit too much. You see the editing I'm doing and stuff. Um, I think I, I just kind of overdid it just a little bit. I could have done those edits really on the watercolor paper and I should have. Um, but anyway, so um, I even tried coloring the lips a little bit and seeing how that looked um, with the, like, it was a Prismacolor watercolor marker. But anyways, all those little shadings and stuff, I could I could have spent my time wiser wisely or smarter on the watercolor paper but I do use I did use a, a thicker one uh, one of the things with this guy was um, you know his cheekbones he didn't have any any cheekbones um, you know he did have them but they weren't they weren't really different from the average person so I didn't really exaggerate much on that except that he had like a dark spot in that area um, so I did put a little bit of brown and yellow in that area um, but one of the uh, one of the things that struck out was, that was different was that he had this like um, blubber in his cheek. It, it looked like a sack of blubber when he smiled or something. But um, I was able to exaggerate that a little bit and um, on on the on the watercolor paper. Um, let's see. But what you know, I exaggerated with a few different ways. I added like a lot of red in there, a lot of pinks. And then I made it kind of look like it was sagging a little bit, um, and I added like a little shadow, and that was almost an accident. I didn't really mean to do that until like towards the end of when I was watercoloring. Um, it just it just looked that way, like it, it started looking like like if it was uh, sagging, and um, so I added like a, a a dark line around it. So sometimes that happens. A lot of the features that I'm drawing, it just almost accidental. Um, you know, I don't mean to do it. The overall shape, I, I guess I do and all the different features where they're placed. But, um, you know, sometimes features will pop out accident accidentally. And I'll just use it. I'll just run with it because it, it you know, adds likeness or it looks okay. Um, kind of like the nose. The nose, see me, I'm drawing like the nostril. I drew it like three different ways, four, five, I'm not sure. Uh, but I was trying out different ways, especially, you know, I wanted to draw the other nostril on the other side. And I was trying to figure out how to do that and um, and I and sometimes it's okay I guess to draw it four or five different times just to make sure you get it right um, and also the that that skin right above the eye um, it, it like in the reference pictures uh, it's real sharp uh, I guess his eyelid that comes up over uh, that comes up over his eye it, it's real sharp like um, I don't know how to say, it, but it it comes down to a to a nice point, not a point, but it's like a sharp edge. Um, and I, I and basically what I did is I I brought that I I I brought that all the way up to the forehead. I just kind of simplified it um, and brought it all the way up. So sometimes, uh, not you know, not everyone's style is like that. But you know, if if uh, I guess my style, it's more cartoony or exaggerated or whatever wild and I don't normally draw like this again but I, I do like to stretch myself on the group page um, I like to do as as much as I can as wild as I can as exaggerated as I can uh, just to kind of stretch myself because when I'm at an event you know I don't I can't I don't have enough time to do this or 
Anyways, but I do like to stretch myself. That way I can always revert back to like the, the milder ones for an event and stuff. But um, my point was, yeah, I, I brought the forehead all the way down. I just kind of exaggerated it in that way. Um, and that that's one of the things I kind of did in my brain. So I was just kind of thinking about that before I started sketching. So it did help to do that. Um, one thing I wanted to mention um, that I didn't mention last week was... Um, I, I, meet, I meet some artists sometimes they're kind of burnt out they don't you know they're tired of drawing and there's some local ones that that usually once a year they you know, they come up and say I'm burnt out and you know I you know I, I've always told them to just kind of take a break and go do something and I've heard other artists give advice and they've said like to you know go go fishing or go do something that you like to do and then come back or you know you know and and you'll be refreshed or whatever but um and sometimes, sometimes I, I tell them to just kind of go look at other artists' work, you know, you know to kind of inspire you, like Jan Optebeck and just different ones. Um, you know, you could do that. Um, but just kind of, you know, rem remembering that we're, you know, our talent is a fun thing. You know, it's a, it's a fun thing that we do, and uh, it should stay fun. And if you're not having fun, you need to, you know, go take either take a break or or stop what you're doing and go draw something just for you draw draw for fun um because a lot of a lot of the people that I talk to here local the artists they you know they're doing a lot of custom stuff they do a lot of custom a lot of events so they're drawing basically for someone else and there's pleasure in that to see someone's reaction and to enjoy you know making someone laugh but it can get to a point where you kind of forget you're just drawing what they want you know you to draw and you just forgetting that they're actually paying you to express your talent that you love to do you know and you can sometimes forget that this is a fun thing so uh, what I was gonna say is um, you know if you feel like it's too much of a task you're not having fun either go do something that that you enjoy doing or you know slap yourself and say I I really enjoy doing this and go do something go go draw something that you actually enjoy drawing go paint go draw a squirrel go do something uh, draw something fun, um, and I, 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 the way what I do is I practice on Wednesdays. I, I, I draw I draw caricatures all week. I, I do this full time on the weekend for events and things, and then during the week also. But um, I take a day of the week to practice, just to kind of practice and have fun. Not drawing for clients, just just you know, drawing for fun. And I use the caricature page, the traditional page, to to express that or to practice so I, I'm you know so on Wednesdays basically I wake up and I'm you know I'm, I'm excited I, I get to practice I get to draw for fun and I, I draw these celebrities uh, for the group and stuff so um, but that's what I do I don't know if, you know if you want to take a day of the week and just practice or an hour of, of whatever day um, but just for fun but I, I do spend quite a quite a while on these caricatures Anywhere from three to four, six hours, and then there, of course, there, of course, there's these other time gaps that I, you know, we go to church on Wednesday, so I got to come back and and uh, record and things, things like that. But um, let me see, let's see. I'm doing the watercolor right now. Um, man, time has gone by. Uh, I um, I'm doing all the shadows. The fun thing at the end is that I like to do is all the shad shading and stuff, all the shadows shadows are really important because they can kind of bring out features um, you'll see at the very end the finished work you're gonna see look when it when it comes up try to try to look at all the shadows stop you know don't don't look at all the other stuff uh, so when you when it gets when the video ends towards the end stop and look at just the shadows don't look at anything else um, you're gonna see like how shadows are important and they they kind of bring out some of the features they bring out the features that should be on top, what should be in the midground, and what should be further back. Like underneath the underneath the nose, you're going to see a shadow, like in the um, in the mustache right there, and that that's important because it it kind of brings that out. And I do that at the very very end. Uh, that's what you see me doing right now, adding all the sh the shadows and stuff. But you know the shadow underneath the um, mustache that that is behind the beard. All that you'll you'll be able to see. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next week.